Okay, in our last video, we, uh, we drew some birds, and then we started to just copy and paste this code so we could draw more birds. So if you're a Hitchcock fan, um, you know, you might want to make a thousand birds. So that's going to be a thousand lines of code for you to draw all of those birds in the sky uh, by copying and pasting. We don't want to do that. There's a much simpler way to draw um, a particular number of an item. And we're going to use the control structure for loop to do that. So hopefully you've learned what a for loop does. I'm not going to really explain it here. Um, but I can essentially copy that draw bird function into here. This is going to iterate through this for loop from zero to four and increment by one every time. So essentially it's going to create four birds, which we can see that. If you want to draw a hundred birds, then all you do is change that number there to a hundred. If you want to draw a thousand birds, there you go. Uh, you've got birds, lots of birds um, in the sky. So makes it really easy um, for you to change the number of birds that you're drawing um, on your screen. So I think 40 is a pretty good number um, of birds there. And again, they're all random because it picks random numbers here. Um, we could actually create a function instead of uh, just draw birds. We could use a function with a parameter. We could say draw all birds. And then this, we could do num birds for our parameter. You can then put this piece of code inside of here. I'm going to kind of tab those for easy reading. And now I can use num birds so that when I draw all birds, I can then say 40 birds. And now it'll draw 40 birds. If I wanted 400 birds, it'll draw 400. Um, those are your birds. Let's look at clouds. So I'm going to do some work on paper to kind of get you um, like ready to draw a cloud and then we'll draw a cloud here. So, Okay, I have found the easiest way to draw a cloud in App Lab is to draw a series of circles that are random in size um, over a distance. So if I wanted to start, let's say, at an X position of 50 and end at an X position of 100, and then if I wanted to start at a Y position of like, you know, 25 and end at a Y position of 75. And then I essentially am going to iterate going this direction, randomly placing a random size circle all along here. So it basically puts all these white circles as it draws across like that. Um, from a number for a length and then a height here of 25 to 75, something along those lines is really what I've found works quite well. Now you could change the opacity of the white and that would look kind of cool. I've not done that yet uh, where it's a random value and then when they stack on top of each other you have some thin areas and some thick areas. Um, I've not done that, but we could give that a shot um, when we're making our clouds today in this one. So here's really what I first want to start doing is I want to just um, go from left to right and let's just place circles left to right. Let's start there. Okay, so it's going to basically be a straight line. It's going to look like an ellipse uh, when you put all these circles next to each other. So we'll start there, or actually dots. They're going to be just dots. Um, and we'll make them the same size to start with. Then we're going to make them dots of random size as we go across. And then what we'll do is we'll manipulate the up and down uh, factor of them. Um, so now it makes those dots of various sizes um, now in the Y direction as well. So that's kind of the process that I usually like to go through when I'm creating an item, I think through, okay, how do I want it to look? Let's start doing something easy and then we'll gradually increase complexity as we go. So that's a good kind of philosophy of, of programming is to do it in that order. 
So I don't really care about the birds right now. I know that works. I'm just going to comment that out. It's going to give me a warning saying that, hey, you're not using this function. That's fine. Uh, we'll uncomment this when we're ready um, to see that. So let's see. We want to, again, do a pin up and a move to. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste these. Um, and then I'm going to move to, let's move to a Y value of 75 and an X value of 50. Okay, uh, I'm going to get rid of this hide so I can actually see where my cursor is. So perfect. That's where I want to be. I'm now going to draw a series of dots. So I'm going to do a dot with a radius of 5. And I need to make it white. So I need to do a pin RGB. White's going to be 255 all the way across. Let's check out where we're at. Perfect. There's a white dot. Now, let's move it one location and then draw another dot. So if you notice, we're going to have to do this. We're going to have to copy this, paste it. Copy this, paste it. And now we go to 51 and then draw a dot. And then, so I'm going to do this just so you can see what is really going on here. So, I'm going to paste, paste, paste. Okay, that's good. I think you'll get the picture. So now we're going to go 52, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 60. So if you notice, we can you can start seeing, I'm going to hide this now. So we can see, it's just drawing a straight line, which is going to look like you know, a line with a rounded edge there because it's a dot of five as we move across. So again, anytime you see a pattern like this, you should be thinking for loop to make your life much easier. So watch how I do this. I'm going to take a for loop and just move it above it. And now I can be anything. And if you look at this, it's this is the variable that's changing, this value right here. So I can actually set this up to start at a value of 50. And I'm going to end at a value of, I said 100. So when I create this, I'm going to cut all this, paste it in here. I'm going to move my pin up outside my for loop. Move to, I'm going to move this as well. These are like setup things, so I'm going to put my setup structure um, or code up in front of my for loop. So then I'm going to move to, and this time I'm just going to move to I75, not image. Didn't want that. I75. So I comma 75, it's going to use this I value as the X coordinate. And then I'm going to put a dot there. And then what happens to I? It gets increased by 1. And then it goes back through. And now I is 51. And it draws a dot. 52 draws a dot. 53 draws a dot. So this for loop allows me to go from 50 to 100 drawing a series of dots. Perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. But instead of a dot of size 5, let's do a random number between 5 and 20 as we go across here. And now it's really hard to see because um, the bigger ones take over the smaller ones, so if you wanted to see this, you can maybe make this a 10, and that's a little bit better. Still, the bigger ones take over the small ones, um, but gives you an idea of what this is doing in terms of a cloud. Now we want this value to change. So we can make this a random number from 25 to 75. And now, when I run it, it starts doing this. If I run it again, you can see that your cloud is all different shapes. 
Now, if you don't like those little dots like that, just change this. Make this between 10 and 20. And now you get a puffier looking cloud. If you want your cloud to be bigger, like longer, you can make this 150. And now it's a longer, puffier cloud. Now let's change the opacity and let's see if we can get that to change. So we can actually move this now into here because we want this to change. And we could do, so with um, the opacity, you it's got to be between, it's a decimal number between 0 and 1. So you could do a random number um, between 0 and 100 and then just divide it by 100. And that's going to give you a number between 0 and 1. And there you go. Look at that. You can actually see the cloud now is taking on some characteristic of see-through along the edges. That's pretty cool. I've not actually done that before. Um, if I want to, I can make this between 5 and let's go 15 and let's see what we get here. Yeah, it's a little bit smaller cloud in terms of size. Looks pretty good. Pretty happy about that. Um, I'm going to shorten it up just a touch. Yeah, those clouds look great. I'm pretty thrilled with that. So, um, if you want to do this, this is great. Um, what if you wanted to do multiple clouds? Well, you could um, you could do a couple different things for multiple clouds. Uh, the easiest is just to copy the for loop. So if you wanted to put a second cloud up here, just copy this, paste it, and now it started starting at an x value of 50, you might want to start at an x value of, you know, 250. And then you might go to 325. And now when you run it, you've got a second cloud that's over here. Okay, now that might be too far, so let's make this 200. And let's make this uh, 300. And there you go. You have a second cloud. If you want to make it the same size as this one, this one's 75, the difference. So we can make this 275. And there we go. Got two clouds in the sky. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with those clouds. Um, the other way you could do is you could actually put a for loop inside of a for loop and then make um, this um, use a math operation to actually change this. Um, but if you're only doing two clouds, this is pretty easy to just make two for loops. Um, and now we can create a function uh, that's called draw clouds. And then we're just going to move these into here. And again, I'm going to do some tabbing on those. And another good thing, I'm going to copy, I'm going to paste that here. So we pin up as we move to that new space. Uh, this looks pretty good. Um, I has already been defined. So since you defined I in this function here, you don't need to define it a second time with the word bar. Um, so you could just do that without the word bar. I'm going to do a draw clouds. I'm going to test that. Perfect. And then I'm going to draw birds, and you're going to see an issue here. Um, you'll notice the clouds cover up the birds. So if you want the clouds in the background and the birds in the foreground, you just need to move birds after the clouds. And that will then put them in front of the clouds. That looks pretty good. That's a lot of birds. Let's go back to 20. Yeah, that's better. It's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. It's a good start. Uh, we're going to do buildings next. We'll go from there.